Although professional tennis is dominated by seasoned professionals like Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic, younger players are also coming up in the game exhibiting excellent form and an unmatched skill set. Yannick Sinner is the perfect example of a young professional in his prime who is succeeding in professional tennis while shocking even the most highly regarded tennis professionals. In today's video, we are discussing the inspirational career of Yannick Sinner, a 22-year-old young professional who has won several titles in a very short period. Born and raised in northern Italy, Sinner's early life was full of sports. At the age of three, he was already skiing and playing tennis. By the time he reached the age of eight, he was one of the top junior skiers in Italy and had won a national championship in giant slalom. He was also fond of football and tennis had always been his last choice. By the time that Sinner was 13, he had taken up tennis full time and given up football and skiing. His coach and father motivated him to pursue tennis and as he entered his teenage years, he wanted to have more control over his choice of sport. Since football was a team sport, Sinner was more inclined towards tennis because he could make all of the decisions for himself. Following this newfound passion, Sinner moved to join the Piatti Tennis Center. Riccardo Piatti, the world-renowned Italian tennis coach, took him under training. However, a lot of work was required since Yannick only played hardly a couple of times per week before joining the center. After a couple of years of hard work, training, and determination, Sinner played in the ITF Junior Circuit for the first time in 2016. Although he was training with one of the best coaches of all time, he never saw success in his junior career. By the end of 2017, Sinner began focusing on professional tours. Despite that, he never qualified for any high-level grade 1 events and singles, and the only higher-level grade A tournament he entered was the Trofeo Bifiglio, a junior red clay ranking tournament held in Milan, Italy. During his first year, he lost in the opening round, but in 2018, he had reached the quarterfinals. Nevertheless, he did not win any major matches in his junior career, so due to this, he never qualified for the Junior Grand Slam tournaments. In the end, because Sinner managed to enter only a few high-level tournaments, his career-high junior ranking was only at number 133. Now, many believe that tennis might not be the perfect career choice for him, however. Sinner knew that he had much more to offer, and with more hard work, he would emerge as a player even the highest-ranked professionals would respect. He never gave up on tennis, and in 2018, he decided to play the ITF men's circuit. Sinner's ranking was relatively low at the time, and therefore he was only accepted into the ITF Futures events. Somehow, he received wild cards for ATP Challenger Tour events in the second half of 2018. The second tier tour was run by ATP, and it meant a great deal for Sinner to be allowed to play in it. However, he did not manage to win any substantial matches, and his only ITF title of 2018 was in doubles. Towards the end of the season, he was ranked number 551, a ranking which was extremely low to qualify for further matches. It was in 2019 when Sinner finally got the chance to increase his ranking after he qualified for the ATP Challenger title in February. He entered the tournament with zero match wins at the Challenger level, but managed to reach the final and win the Challenger title in Bergamo at the Trofeo Falt Perel 2019. He became the youngest Italian to win a Challenger title in the history of the sport, and this win gave his ranking a much needed boost. Suddenly, he rose over 200 spots and was ranked at 324th place in the ATP rankings. He later entered the Hungarian Open as a lucky loser and notched his first ever tour level win over Matej Valkush. In the second half of the season, Sinner began playing on the ATP tour more often. He also entered the Italian Open where he won his first ever ATP Masters title against Steve Johnson. His next win at the Croatia Open Umag was more notable as it broke him into the top 200 rankings. He also played in the Wimbledon qualifying rounds but could not win. Nevertheless, he did qualify for his first ever Grand Slam main draw at the US Open. Towards the end of the season, he entered the European Open as a wild card and became the youngest player in five years to reach an ATP semifinal. He beat Gail Monfields at the European Open, which marked his first career top 50 victory and led his name into the top 100 rankings for the first time. 
He also qualified for the 2019 Next Gen ATP Finals as the Italian wild card and the lowest seed. He beat Alex de Menard in straight sets to take home the Next Gen ATP title of 2019. As the year ended, Sinner now ranked as the top 78th youngest player and became the youngest player in the year-end top 80 since Rafael Nadal in 2003. His performance shocked everyone and ultimately he was named as the ATP's Newcomer of the Year. 2020 was also a very successful year for Sinner. He won the Rotterdam Open against David Goffin and the Sofia Open for his first ATP title. He became the youngest Italian tour-level player in the Open era, rising through the rankings and earned the 37th spot in the world rankings. But more than any year, 2021 was when Sinner excelled on the court. At the Great Ocean Road Open, he won his second ATP title and became the youngest player to win back-to-back -back ATP titles since Rafael Nadal in 2005. Experts and opponents believe that Yannick Sinner's game has drastically improved and he is quickly turning into a player that many opponents would fear. Moving on in the season, he achieved a new milestone in his career by reaching his first ATP Masters 1000 final. He defeated Roberto Batista Agut in the semifinal, but could not win in the finals. In the end, he finished as a runner-up to Huber Hercos. The next year, he reached the finals of the Croatia Open and played against Carlos Alcaraz. He beat him, and Sinner took home his first ever clay court title. He also reached three major quarterfinals at the Miami Open, the Monte Carlo Masters, and the Grand Slam quarterfinals. This time around, his career was on fire and he reached the world number 15 ranking. Everyone knew that Sinner was coming up in the game and there was no stopping him. The 2023 season started with Sinner playing at the 2023 Adelaide International 1, where he lost in the quarterfinals against Sebastian Corda. He then entered the 2023 Australian Open and lost in the fourth round to Stefano Sidipas. His start of the season was not very smooth, however, at the Open Sud de France, he was back in his best form and won his career seventh title in Montpellier. Moving further, he took revenge for the Australian Open loss at the ABN Amro Open where he defeated Stefano Sidipas to mark his biggest win ever. He later defeated Talon Greek Spor to reach the finals, but eventually lost the title to Daniil Medvedev. That year, he also won his Maiden Masters 1000 title at the Canadian Open and was also the Davis Cup champion. As the 2023 season ended, Sinner's world ranking was shockingly high as he was now fourth in the world. In 2024, Sinner made history when he reached the semifinals of the Australian Open and played against the world number one defending champion, Novak Djokovic. Sinner soon beat Djokovic and became the first player not to face a break point against him in a completed major match. The loss was also significant for Djokovic as it was his first defeat at the Australian Open since 2018. In the Australian Open final, he defeated Daniil Medvedev to become the first Italian player to win Australian Open singles in 48 years. Sinner rose to a new career high of number three in the world, becoming the highest ranked Italian player in history. He also made a record of a 17-match streak at the ATP level, which was the longest for any Italian player in the Open era. Today, he has won a total of 12 career titles and earned over $2 million in prize money throughout his young career. So do you think Yannick will become the world number one this year? Let us know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you are notified as soon as we upload our next video. Thank you for watching.